Get ready for another host at home, Adams Archives. Today, three lucky people are going to match wits on the exciting game show that's all about country music and country stars. Come on along with us and join the fun. It's time to play Fandango. And here comes our fun leader. Please welcome the star host of our country music game show, Bill Anderson. Hello, Bill. Oh, I love you. Thank you. And I'm glad you joined us wherever you're watching the Nashville Network. Going to play a little country music trivia. If you think you know a lot about country, see if you know as much as the people that have come along to play with us. We got a champion who's going for his fifth consecutive win today. A couple of challengers. Roger, welcome to the show. Thank you, Bill. My name is Roger Clark. I'm from Sarasota, Florida. I work for Doctors Hospital. And I understand you brought a gift uh, for Edgar? Yes. This is... Oh. He's my aunt's hero. And... Uh, <laughs> She's a poor judge of character. Too. Wait a minute. <laughs> Genuine canned Florida sunshine. Edgar, yes. what do you think? <laughs> I'd go good with vodka. <laughs> <laughs> the trick, Edgar, is getting the can open. We'll right. leave that there for you. Roger, welcome to Nashville. Right. Good luck on our show. Hi, Dot. Hi, I'm Dot Sawyer from Pegram, Tennessee, and I'm a secretary. And I understand that you're quite a collector of uh, all kinds of news and clippings and all about country. That ought to come in handy on our show. I hope so. You do good at home. I bet you can do good up here. Chuck is our current champion going for his fifth win. Chuck, remind everybody about Hello, you. Hello, Bill. I'm Chuck Johnson from Phelps, Kentucky. And I'm a coal miner. And uh, you mentioned earlier on the show that you were an extra in the movie Coal Miner's right. Daughter. An interesting guy right here. Chuck and Dot and Roger, we're going to have a little fun. We're going to be back and open up the liquid sunshine and uh, ask some questions and hopefully get some answers in just a minute. Well, our champion, Chuck Johnson's won over $5,000 worth of prizes the last couple of days. Dot and Roger said so they could use a little bit of that, so it's all up for grabs today. You know how we do it. Ten points for the right answer to every question I toss out at you. Then we go to the bonus round. You choose your categories from group therapy. Is that a fact? Hit and run. Feathered friends. Tony Joe White is our star of the day. Be a sport. Time after time. Heart to heart. And moonshine. One of those nine squares is the secret square. Select that one without knowing what it is and give me the right answer to the bonus question and you'll get double the amount of points that you wager. We play for highest total score at the end of two rounds and then we play Meet the Stars for the grand prize. Edgar, have you opened up your uh, canned sunshine yet? No, but I have a joke for Roger. Okay. This is in a doctor's office. Patient comes in. Are all these people ahead of me? Reception says, yes, but you can go on in. Patient says, oh, that's okay. I got lots of time. Reception says, oh, no, you don't. I've seen your x-rays. <laughs> <laughs> Let's play Fandango, Bill. You laugh at him, he'll tell some more. Put your hands on your buttons for 10 points. What country classic song begins with these words? Hear that lonesome whippoorwill. Chuck. I'm so lonesome I could cry. Yes, I'm so lonesome I could cry. The great Hank Williams song. And the champ, I got to warn you, Roger and Dot, he's quick. Okay, what do we do now? Bill, I'll wager it all on hit and run. Hit and run. This is about people who've had hits and they've kind of run off in the distance and you haven't heard much about them. This young lady had a hit in 1981 with a song called I'm Taking a Heartbreak. Was her name Cindy Hurt or Terry Gregory? Terry Gregory. Terry Gregory is the right answer and I got a feeling you just pulled that out of thin air, but you did a, you did a good job of pulling. This singer's first name sounds like a tiny annoying insect. And his last name is the same as the country stores along the interstate that are famous for their pecan logs. Who am I talking about? Chuck. Stucky. Roger. Nat Stucky. Nat Stucky. That's what yeah. I'm looking for. The Nat and the Stucky. All right, Roger, you've got 10 points. Uh, Bill, I'd like to bet 10 on group therapy, please. Look what you did. You chose the secret square. You weighed your 10, I'll give you 20 for the right answer. Here's a popular family singing group. Listen and tell me who they are. Houston. The Gatlin Brothers. The Gatlin Houston. Brothers. You are right. Larry, Steve, and Rudy, of course. All right. Roger, being from Florida, I would have been very disappointed had you not gotten that about this Stuckies up and down the highway because they're all down in that part of the country. Here's a country giant with one of his recent efforts. Listen and tell me the singer's name. Let's chase each other. Merle Haggard. Merle Haggard is right. 
All right, the game's tied at this point. I'll wager 10, Bill, on uh, moonshine. Oh, Kentucky boy, I'll know a little bit about moonshine over in the hills of Kentucky. According to this classic bluegrass song, if you're hungry for corn, you'll have to get it from a jar. Name this Tennessee state song. Uh, Rocky Top. Rocky Top, of course. <laughs> Where to get the corn from a jar, 40 to 30. Come right. on, Doc. Doctor, doctor, please come over quick. My dog <laughs> swallowed a fountain pen. I'll be right there. What are you doing in the meantime? I'm using a pencil. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I have a surprise prize in here, old Whisper Howler. It's the Walls Deluxe Home Haircutting Kit. Lightweight clipper and four attachment combs. Use it on your dog, even. It has scissors, barber comb, and instruction booklet. It's furnished by Wall. Oh, your jokes are dogs, that's what they are. I'm going to sing you part of a country classic. When I stop, you sing the next line. Abilene, Roger. Abilene, prettiest town that I've ever seen. Women there don't treat you mean in Abilene, my Abilene. You did it, Roger. You got the whole thing. Okay, now you tied Chuck. You've each got 40 points. Uh, Bill, I'll bet 20 on be a sport. Okay, are you a sports fan? Well, kind of, yes. Well, let's see how much you know about this. This member of the Oak Ridge Boys is sure a sports fan. He's the part owner of at least three baseball teams, the Nashville Sounds, the Greensboro Hornets, and the Salem Redbirds. Which Oak Ridge Boy is it? Uh, I, uh, Richard Sturman. Yes, it is. Richard Sturman, the <laughs> bass singer. Thought you weren't going to get it out there for a minute. Richard and Conway and a bunch of them are in that. Okay, I'm going to scramble up some letters that make the first name of a country star. You unscramble them and tell me who I'm talking about. Scrambled up, the letters of his first name are Y-Z-R-Z-A. Roger. Razzie. Razzie, as in Bailey. You are right. Okay, Roger, you're up to 70 points now. Uh, I bet 25 on... Heart to heart. Okay, let me find that category down here. Doesn't have anything to do with the television show by that name. This fella's pouring out his heart in this song. Listen and tell me who this is. Got me heart over my Mel Tillis. Mel Tillis and the Florida man should have gotten that one too. The Pee Flash, 95 to 40. Come on, Dot, put some points up there. Don't let these old boys do that to you. Here's one of the biggest songs of 1984. Listen and tell me the name of this song. Rolled out this morning. Chuck, uh, a little good news today. Good news. You're right, by Ann Murray. We got a good game. Roger is 45 points ahead of you, Chuck. I'll wager. I'll, I'll wager uh, 40 on is that a fact? All right. We have some unusual questions in this category. Eddie Rabbit is of Irish ancestry. We all know that. He changed his name from Eddie O'Hare after his manager in New Jersey suggested that O'Hare did not sound country enough and would probably have a negative effect on his career. Is that a fact? No. It's absolutely not. He says Rabbit is his real name. You got the right answer. Okay, 95 to 90. Take the age that Johnny Cash's daddy left home in a boy named Sue and add it to the number of bells the Browns sang about, and you have what number, Chuck? Five. No. Roger. Six. Six, that's right. Three plus three. Daddy left home when I was three and the three bells. All right, 105 to 90. Bill, I'd like to bet uh, 40 on time after time. After time and again. Secret Square's still up there, isn't it? Nobody's got Oh, no, you did get it. You got it early. Sure, you'd have been so long, I forgot. In 1980, Charlie Pride had two top ten records that were remakes of Hank Williams' hits. Which one of these was not one of them? You Win Again, Honky Tonk Blues, or Cold Cold Heart? Cold Cold Heart. That's right. He did record the other two. Oh, my goodness. Good game. Okay, it's going to be write it down on the paper time. Get your pen and your paper over there. Dot, get 50 points on this one, then. Get back in this thing. 50 points for everybody that gets the right answer to this question. This legendary singer was a teenage guitar player nicknamed Little Glenny Boy when he met Hank Williams Sr. in 1949. Am I speaking of Willie Nelson, George Jones, or Glenn Campbell? For 50 points. <laughs>
Dot, you ought to know that. You say you collect news and stories and all about country music people. Let me see what you put. You put Willie Nelson, 1949. I don't think Willie was a teenage guitar player in 1949. Dot, I can't give you any points. I wish I could. Chuck, let me see what you put. You put Glenn Campbell. That's not the right answer either, which means obviously George Jones was known as Little Glenny Boy. You put Glenn Campbell. I can't give any points away on that one. Well, my goodness. We're going to go to the commercial. We're going to be back, give away lots of points, lots of prizes. You watch this and come back and do it. Guests and staff of Fandango stay at the beautiful new Sheraton Music City Hotel, just two miles from the airport and minutes from Opryland. Make your reservations today. Call 1-800-325-3535. Some contestants on Fandango will receive the Regina Power Team. It's the only lightweight back check rated by Consumer Reports. The two motor power team, the lightweight that cleans like a heavyweight by Regina. Contestants on Fandango may win a trip steamboating aboard the luxurious Mississippi Queen or legendary Delta Queen. Seven night steamboating vacations that carry you back in time and through the heart of America. Or a four night super cruise for two from Miami to Nassau Freeport and Little Stirrup K, a private Bahamas out island. Deluxe accommodations, gourmet meals, and great entertainment aboard the luxurious SS Emerald Seas. Or a week at the Continental Hotel, a new luxury hotel at budget prices in Las Vegas, Nevada. 400 elegant rooms, Olympic-sized pool, all surrounded by park and greens. You'll fly on Republic Airlines, serving major business centers across the United States, as well as Mexico, Canada, and the Caribbean. Republic Airlines, we make you feel like flying. And now, here comes Nurse Bill and the second half of the show. All right, Edgar Rogers in the lead with 145 points. Chuck going for his fifth win today is at 90 points. Dot doesn't have any, but Dot, let me tell you, a lot of people have come back in the second round. Just hit that button quick and answer the questions. They're worth 20 points apiece. Now we've cleared the bonus board. We've got a brand new secret square. Select that and your points can add up mighty, mighty fast. One of Jim Reeves' biggest hit songs was a song called He'll Have to Go. What's the first word of that song, Chuck? Put. That's right. Put your sweet lips a little closer to the phone. And we put 20 points up there for you. Um, Bill, I'll wager 20 points on uh, moonshine. Back to the moonshine category again. According to the song Mountain Dew, who has a still on the hill? My Uncle Bill. That's right. Old Uncle Bill has a still on the hill. Runs off a gallon or two. Game gets closer. Here's a fellow that tried many years for commercial success, and this song brought him one step closer to it. Listen and name the singer of this song. Oh, Lisa lost her smile. David Allen Coe. David Allen Coe is the right answer. Okay, Roger, you're at 165. Bill, I'll bet $25 on group therapy. Well, oh, I wish we had dollars, but yeah. you just have to bet points. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. If you want to give me $25, sure. that'll be all right. The popular singing family, the Whites, began performing under another name. Was it the Down Home Folks or the Average White Band? The Average White Band. Oh, goodness. It was the Down Home Folks. The Whites used to be known as the Down Home Folks. Well, we have to take your points away. The game is still mighty close. Doyle Lawson, Jesse McReynolds, and Bobby Osborne. They're all well-known bluegrass pickers, and they're all closely associated with the same instrument. What instrument is it, Roger? Mandolin. The mandolin is right. Okay, you're at 160 now. You're 30 points ahead of Chuck. Uh, Bill, I'll bet 20 points on time after time. <laughs> go ahead and bet the dollars. That's all right. This song was originally a pop hit for a group called The Carpenters. Listen and tell me the name of the country lady who's singing this version. Lynn Anderson. Lynn Anderson is right. That song is one that's been a hit time after time. 180 now to 130. Doctor, doctor, my baby got into my golf bag and swallowed all my teas. I'll be right there. What are you doing in the meantime? <laughs> I'm practicing my putting. Yeah. <laughs> Four. <laughs> oh, you want four more? No. Uh, I have a surprise prize to give away. Bill, it's the Hitachi chime matic food steamer rice cooker with automatic warmer that makes perfect rice, tasty vegetables, and other steam dishes simply and automatically. Furnished by Hitachi Consumer Products Corporation for the next right answer. Doctor, doctor. Okay, here's an all-time country great with one of his early hits. Listen and tell me who's singing. I'm a honky-tonk man. Big. And I 
I can't seem to start or jump. I love to give the girls a whirl to the moon. Johnny Horton. The late and great Johnny Horton, one of his first big, big songs, one very closely identified with him. Which one of the following songs was not a hit for Ray Stevens? The Streak, Guitar Zan, Kansas City Star, or Mr. Businessman, Chuck? Kansas City Star. That's right. Roger Miller had that one. Ray had the others. You're 30 points behind, Chuck. Bill, I'll wager 30 on uh, Hit and Run. Okay, we'll try this category again. This was a big hit for this fella before he kind of rode off in the sunset. Listen and tell me who this is. Skip a row. Henson Cargill. Henson Cargill from Oklahoma City. Right you are. Oh, the game is tied. 180 apiece. According to the title of a song by Alabama, to what extent are they guilty of love? Chuck. First degree. Love in the first degree. right on. And Chuck, I think this is the first time you've been ahead, at least for it a is, while. It is. 200 points. Bill, I'll wager uh, 15 points. <laughs> Big spender. On what, Chuck? Oh, is that a fact? Okay. Oh, you chose this equal square. You should have wagered more points than that, maybe. In his song, One Piece at a Time, Johnny Cash sings about working in a car factory. In 1950, Johnny actually did work in a General Motors factory in Pontiac, Michigan. Is that a fact? No. It says there that it oh. is. That really did take place once upon a time, and we verified that in a couple of different places. Well, you're still in the lead. All right, let me tell you what that means. Get your paper and pen over there. That's our little 50-point catch-up bail. It comes down to this. I've got 50 points for the right answer to this question. I've got a minus 50 for the wrong answer. Chuck or Roger could win the game right here on this question. In 1967, this singer literally swept away the first CMA award show by winning Single of the Year, Album of the Year, and Male Vocalist of the Year. Today, he's one of the brightest stars on the Grand Ole Opry. For 50 points, give me his name. In 1967, he won all those awards. Think back to 1967. I'll give you an extra second. Take a guess if you don't know. And remember who had a lot of big records back at that particular time. Kind of hard to remember. That was the very first CMA award show, even before it was on television. Let me see what Dot put over here. I sure would like to give you some points. I would love very much to. You said Jim Ed Brown. Honey, I wish I could give you the points for that, but that's not the man I'm looking for. So I'm going to have to lay it back down and come down here to Roger. Roger, let me see what you put. Roger put Billy Walker. That's not the right answer either, Roger. I wish that that had been what I was looking for. I'd love to give you some points. Champ, looks like you're going to win by five, even if you got it wrong. You put Eddie Arnold. That was a very big period in Eddie Arnold's career, but that was not the man that I was looking for. Does anybody in the audience know who it was? Jack, Jack Green. Green. Remember, there goes my everything and a lot of his. If my math is right, though, Chuck, you've still got the most points. Congratulations to you. Five you. times in a row, you had won. Edgar, what's his prize? Well, for one of the ladies in your life, it's Warren Z's assortment of women's fashions. Classic looks designed for the woman on the go, Chuck. A variety of styles that'll take her almost anywhere. Style and practicality furnished by Warren Z. God, I hope you've had a good time. I have. We got some it nice. Was, it was worth a lot just to get to be out here and meet you and all these. Thank you. Fun. Well, it's nice to see you. We got some good going away gifts. You came so close, Roger. Thank you for being here. Thank you for the gift for Edgar. We're going to be back and play Meet the Stars with Chuck one more time. We might just give him the grand prize today. Come back and find out. Well, Chuck, this is it. You've won over $5,400 in prizes. You've won five games. That's the limit. So you're either going to win it all today or retire undefeated as a five-time champion. How does that feel? Feels good. All right. Let me tell you what you got to do. All that stands between you and a whole lot more in prizes is four answers the same as Tony Joe White, our star of the day, gave us to some questions. If you can match the same answers he gave us, all of this is yours, including the grand prize. It is a week with your honey on a windjammer barefoot cruise, casual sailing adventure in the exotic Caribbean for both old salts and landlubbers. Take off your shoes and sail away to paradise with windjammer barefoot cruises. Transportation courtesy of Republic Airlines, serving major business centers across the United States as well as Mexico, Canada, and the Caribbean. Republic Airlines, we make you feel like flying. Valued at over $2,000.
All right, that's just the grand prize. Of course, as you know, one correct answer deserves one prize, and we've got three others. They are... On round one from Benrus, this lady's 28 diamond fashion watch, adjustable Italian mesh bracelet, silver tone dial and case, precision 17 jewel movement by Benrus, approximate retail value $400. On round two, it's Amelia Earhart luggage, fashion and durability combined in this British tweed collection, featuring richly quilted interiors and bumper guard binding furnished by Amelia Earhart. Retail value approximately $500. And on round three, it's Lane's handcrafted beverage cabinet of oak veneers. Drop the front and the top opens automatically and interior lights turn on, equipped with lock and key, furnished by the Lane Company. Retail value almost $960. Total value of these three prizes over $1,800. Which means we're playing for $3,860 more or less worth the prizes to add to the $5,400 you've already won. I don't tell you, don't have to tell you how to do it, but I will real quick. I'll remind you one prize per correct answer. Anytime you want to stop, keep your prizes. You can give me an incorrect answer. You forfeit, match all four, and it's all yours. Ready to go on that barefoot cruise? Bonnie says, uh-huh. She's crossing her fingers on the front row. Tony Joe White. We asked Tony Joe if one of your songs was going to be put in a time capsule to be opened in 100 years, which song would you like it to be? Did he say Redneck Women or did he say Rainy Night in Georgia? Redneck Women. Let's see what Tony Joe White said. Well, the song... If it was put in a capsule and opened a hundred years from now, that I've always uh, felt really good about writing was uh, Rainy Night in Georgia. Oh, oh, oh golly, that is a great, great song. Well, obviously, you can't win the grand prize. You can't win all of those prizes. I'll give you one more chance to win that lady's watch, though. Bonnie's okay. been over there. Bonnie, come here. You've been sitting over there all five days this week, just coming out here and cheering him on, and he's dedicated the show to you. Did you see that watch? Yes, I did. You'd like to win that? It's beautiful. Let's see if he can win it for you. Y'all hang on to one another here. We asked Tony Joe White if you were going to the moon and you could take only one thing with you, what would it be? Did he say my lunch, or did he say Sophia Loren? Hmm. That's obvious, Sophia Loren. You really think so? You don't think I he'd get hungry so. up there, huh? Surely he's not crazy. <laughs> <laughs> let's find out. Y'all turn around and look, and let's see for that watch. Sophia Loren. <laughs> All right. We got a couple of seconds here. I understand that you two uh, met because of Jerry Lee Lewis. Tell me that story. Well, he was, had a concert in a neighboring town, and uh, she was there, and I was there. We're, we didn't know each other until that night, and I was taking pictures. I'm a photography buff, and she uh, sort of followed me around, watched me take pictures, <laughs> and I invited her to sit with me in front of the stage. I'm sort of pushy. I move around and try to get pictures as good as I can. So I told her, stick with me, we'll get close seat. And we did, and... Uh, the whole night didn't last this long, Chuck. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway. I'm glad you found each other, and I'm glad you came down here, and goodness gracious, great balls of fire. We'll see you again. Thank you all for being with us. We'll have three brand new contestants on our next show. Join us on Fandango. Bye. Fandango Catering is provided by Paul Folk's Family Restaurants, chicken, seafood, and so forth. With quality home-style cooking, fast, friendly service at an affordable price. Paul Folk's, more than good food, a good feeling.